Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim. We're finally back on the 737 single seat or the SS I'm calling it. And today we're gonna to work on the upper MIP panel, specifically the captain's DU panel. Now this comes in two parts. There are two options. You can 3D print this, but of course the backlighting isn't gonna be very good and the text, is, it's okay when you 3D print it, I have to admit, especially with the new Bamboo Labs X1. Got our faceplate there. Just got to make sure that we take the protective film off the back to allow the light to go through. It will actually travel through the clear white stuff anyway. And then again, the same for the back plate. Now this is clear perspex, three millimeter. It'll go through the clear stuff at the back, but we've got to take the painted side off like so, and then that leaves a clear plate with a painted rim, so we don't get any light spill out of the edges. So while the soldering iron and the brass insert tool heat up, let me explain about the back cases. Now we've got two back cases here. We've got the large version, aptly named L for large. Hopefully you can see that on the inside. And that fits the larger eight position rotary switches, 45 degrees. And then we've got the smaller version which takes these tiny, or the 16 millimeter rotary switches here. You can see that they are a lot smaller, but they do the same job and they work just as well. And this is called the DUS for S version, for small version. So for this build video, I'm gonna put the smaller one aside, but just note that the cheap, they are cheaper, they're easy to get hold of, and there is a set design for that. That too has got its own adapter shafts to fit. Let's do some brass inserts now. We've got the back box, which is the lighting back box. We're hopefully just gonna gently insert these brass inserts into the back of the box. We can shift the back box out of the way and we've got some more brass inserts to fit into the adapter shafts. So the idea with these is to push the brass insert and get it started ever so slightly. There we go. Then use a bit of super glue on the outside then use the vise to try and insert it. There she goes. And there it is, fully inserted. We've now got to fit brass inserts to our general knobs. These are the 737. They're printed in clear translucent which means that hopefully they should light up when we put light on the back of the knob. Now this time I don't want to put the knob in the vise because it might damage it on the metal work. I could put tape in there, but that's just a lot of hassle. We're just gonna screw the brasser onto an M4 screw, cover it in CA glue, super glue, and hopefully just push it into the knob. No problem. Undo the screw, and there is our knob. There's the clear section that hopefully we're gonna backlight the knob so the white section lights up at night. That's all the brass inserts done. We've got our lighting back box. Let's get some rotary switches fitted. So I'm gonna bring this in, and I can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, five positions, 
and we can set the locking ring. I'm just gonna place the rotary switch into the back of the unit. And of course, we've got the locating tang here, which needs to go into the orifice at the top there. And we can put the locking nut on. That can go in there. And there's our two rotary switches fitted. So we can grab our adapter shafts. I'm gonna put an M4 grub screw in. There we go. I'm gonna place the adapter shaft onto the shaft of the rotary switch. Turn it so the holes line up with the base here. And now we can tie it up onto the shaft. And with the shaft securely fitted, that will stop the knob from pulling out of the unit. We can put the other one on. And of course, now we need our backlighting tape. This is 12 volt LED strip. I'm just gonna put two, definitely one across the top. And yeah, we might get one across the bottom just for extra lighting. And there's our LED strip fitted. We've just gotta wire it up. Again, we could do with a cable restraint by putting a, a tie wrap mount in there. So to make it look a bit tidier, I'm gonna put the screw in from the back again. So you only see the dome head rather than the nut and the protruding screw thread. And hide the mess on the inside. Not really mess, but it's definitely gonna make for a, a much better finish. And there's our tie wrap mount in the corner. So all we've got to do now is put these parts in the panel and finish this part of the panel off. You will notice, however, that I haven't wired the two rotary switches up. And that is because I will come back and do that later on when I know the cable lengths required. I'm not going to waste wire just because I think that's about the right length. I'm not too sure where I'm going to put the interface boards yet in this video. The back panel is simply going to slot behind. We've got our base panel from the DU panel. And then we've got the actual face panel. We've got two M4 screws. I'm just making sure that the panels are aligned correctly. There we go, that's nice and tight. Let's put power on and see how these look without the knobs on. Make sure that these shafts actually illuminate. Okay, so we'll pull it, that's a 11 volts. And that is lit up really well. And of course, next up is to fit the knobs. Oh, they fit on lovely. Let's just fasten them on. That's that one. Oh, and the stripes lit up absolutely fantastic. Okay guys, you may not be able to see this very well. I've got the studio lights off, and as the low light gets worse, the camera quality gets worse. I'm gonna put the back lighting on now, which is 12 volts, there we go. Uh, that's full brightness. You can see that the knobs are lit up here on the white stripes. They look quite good. You can really see where they need to go, even in low light conditions. Let's just turn the brightness down a bit. There we go. Because you really don't want the lights in your face when you're flying at night. You don't want it to be dazzling you. So that's about the correct brightness there. I'm gonna turn the studio lights back on. There we go. And you can see the text clear as day in normal daylight conditions. That's the panel off. and I, You probably can't even see the lights on when it comes on. Uh, there we go. That's full brightness in the day. And the back of the panel looks like this. At the moment, we've got the two power leads for the LED display, and we've still yet to connect the wires up. Well guys, that's the end of another video. The 737SS is slowly coming together. 
I should be able to get a bit more momentum now that I haven't got other projects to concentrate on. Really, in the next few episodes, want to get the all the corry switches done, including the stab out of trim corry there. We've got the AFDS to do and the light test panel just to finish this upper panel off. We've also got to fit the monitor because once the monitor's in, that makes a huge difference to how the panel looks anyway. This has been hopefully a simple build to follow along. Until next time, guys, sim out.